previously on the Children's Corner. from Fantasy Forest. Uh, Steal and robbing, that's what we do. Good at it, too, I have to add. And, uh, well, we like it here. We're gonna stay. There's only one little problem. This county isn't big enough for two gangs. So, you'll have to leave. Oh, boys. I feel a contortion coming on. <laughs> Don't you mean a confrontation, Paul? Oh, confrontation. Yeah, whatever. Take cover, boys. Back. Back. When I'm sitting around my homework all done and there's nothing to do I call all of my friends they don't answer the phone where have they gone to well I'm thinking and I'm thinking with the TV right in front of me when something catches my eye it's a television program that's made for younger people I think I'll give it a try I'm gonna go to the children's corner And deep in trouble, 
you're by my side You won't bust my bubble Cause you, you always make it cool You're always by my side You're always there for me It doesn't matter if I'm wrong or if I am right But you always set me straight With advice what I should do You're my friend, you're my pal Help me see the light I just want you to know I need you And you
and you throw. Okay? Uh, uh, okay, one eye, go ahead and take it. Uh, Remember, just pull the pin and you throw. Uh, okay. Hey, everybody down! Hey, hey Bart! Huh? What do we do with this part? Oh, what eye? That's the part you throw, not the pin part. Here. Ah! 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 Down! Oh, what's this, Paul? Oh, it's a rock. Uh, the thorn rocks at us, boys. It was, uh, they're getting desperate. We almost got them. Keep firing. Uh, right to get rid of that thing. What was that? Oh, that boy. That's cheating is what that was. Uh, those are exploding rocks. Uh, keep firing. Whew, that was loud. Yeah, it was. All right. Here, Jibberin, you take one. Here you go, George. All right, remember, pull the pin. Throw the black part, okay? Not the pin. Go ahead. Ready to be down? Go! Oh! Oh, whoa, get rid of it, Doc! Oh! That's it, boys. We're not equipped for this kind of warfare. Uh, regress! Regress! Don't you mean retreat, Pa? Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, back to the trailer, boys. Come on, let's go! What do you say? He says we won. We won. You chased oh, them off. Yeah. You're a great friend. We <laughs> needed you. You came through for us, and uh, well, they're gone, and, and you saved the day, and we don't have to get out of town. And you're great, Bart. That's what he said. That's right, Bart. You're always there for us. Uh, yeah. Always there for us, Bart. Well, you know that's what I do. Well, now that we chased off those intruders, <laughs> let's gather everything up and get back to the hideout. Uh -huh. All right. Uh -huh. Ah. Yeah, what I? Yeah. Uh, how many of these uh, black rocks we got left? Uh, four, Bart. We got four left. Yeah. Wait, we got four left. Yeah. All right. We uh, threw. Th we had seven. We yeah. threw three. Yeah. There was only two explosions. Yeah. Right. That's right. We got four in here. Yeah. Two exploded. We yeah. got one left. Where'd it go? I don't know. All right, everybody, let's look around for it. All right. There it is, Bart! Huh? There it is, Bart, right up there. Oh! Ha! Ah. Oh, great! Oh, hi, folks. Sheriff Stephen Jay here, and welcome back to the Children's Corner. Just uh, going through this box I got from Royce a while back, and has a copy of Never Jump on a Grump in it. I haven't read this book in a while. Story about the time when Elroy Slawczynski learned that rules have a purpose. No matter how small, no matter how large, there's a reason for a rule. And let me read it to you. I have to put on my glasses, of course. I always forget to put on my glasses. Ah. The, uh... Never jump on a grump. The world of the magical couch is quite grand, with many strange creatures and towns in its land. Some towns include its land, where weezits reside, and prank sounds a town where schlots like to hide. But Slouchville's the place where trouble can start, for slouches live here and have a mischievous heart. It was here trouble started this very fine day for Elroy Slouchinsky in a very strange way. Oh yes, trouble started. It was right after school. Today he would learn you must not break a rule. The space of the Grumps is a town where Grumps live. A funny little people that all love to give. They keep rooms filled with presents from ceiling to floor to hand out to strangers who may pass by their door. They just give, 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 give. A niceness so rare, but sometimes too nice that some people can't bear. They wear floppy tall hats and pants that don't fit. Their shirts are all dirty, but they don't care a bit. Their town has no rules for them to obey, but there's one rule for strangers, a warning they say. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever do you jump. Never, 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 never do you jump on a grump. Though all grumps are nice, the nicest is Jen. Her full name, in fact, is Jenny Grumpian. She works very hard, always does what she must. She's a smart little girl and has everyone's trust. This grump is quite young, about seven years old. And she gives like no other, for her heart is like gold. But strangers are few in the space of the grumps, so Jenny just waits, her gifts wrapped in clumps. These gifts just kept growing each day of the week. Of how many she has, she never does speak. 
She just waits every day, sometimes in a gown, to give all her gifts to the first stranger in town. As she waits, she does worry, for their town has a rule. The next stranger in town best not be a fool, for that rule is a warning, or so they do say, a warning for strangers that they must obey. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever do you jump. Never, 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 never do you jump on a grump. Back in Slouchville, which is at the base of some hills, sat Elroy Slouchinsky all smiles from past thrills. For today was too quiet, no trouble to brew. So we dreamed of old memories, for there weren't any new. You see, once Elroy sneaked into its land and took a Thanksgiving turkey that was basted and cooked. He thought he was smart, this turkey he took, not knowing Chief Weezit knew he was the crook. Now Elroy was bored this fine quiet day, as he stared at the hills that seemed so far away. Those hills are forbidden, all slouches beware. Not one slouch in Slouchville is allowed to go there. And why this is so, not one slouch can say. But Elroy was curious, so he'd go anyway. He just had to go up there and see what he could in those hills behind Slouchville. He felt like he should. So that's how it started this very fine day. A rule would be broken, a warning they say. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever do you jump. Never, 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 never do you jump on a grump. Elroy was hungry, so a lunch he did make. Then walked towards the hills, the ground started to shake. It shook with a thump, then there was a pause. Then it shook once again as he looked at the cause. For just at that moment, he saw a friend's face. It was Mr. Jaloptimus who was shaking the place. Well, hi there, Big J, Elroy said. How are you? Mr. J then replied, Elroy, how do you do? He dropped a case as he spoke, and out popped a book, and Mr. J laughed as his body it shook. So Elroy, he asked, why are you out here? Outside your town, Slouchville, no other town near. Mr. J, replied Elroy, just between you and me, those hills behind Slouchville I want to go see. Mr. Jaloptimus knew Grumps lived in the hills. He knew of their warning and it gave him the chills. You be careful, he said, for a rule has been made for strangers that enter and it must be obeyed. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever do you jump. Never, 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 never do you jump on a grump. Elroy laughed as he waved at the jolly big man, then entered the hills to continue his plan. For what was a rule, or even one's word? They were meant to be broken, or so he had heard. So he entered the hills and started his feet. When nice Auntie Carol, he happened to meet. Auntie Carol said hi and started to talk, but Elroy just waved and continued his walk. For though she was nice and smart as a top, when she started talking, she just would not stop. He walked by a sign which he stopped and he read, Space of the Grumps, about one mile ahead. Now what was a grump? Elroy thought to himself. Was it a small man, a tall man, a bird, or an elf? The sign was real huge and the words were bright green. It was the brightest and biggest sign he'd ever seen. Then he saw some more words. He continued to read. The words were a warning, a message to heed. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever do you jump. Never, 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 never do you jump on a grump. At the edge of the town was Jen this fine day, when she happened to see Elroy walking her way. Her face grew a smile as she ran back to town to grab all her gifts and put on her gown. She threw all her gifts in the back of a cart, which was hitched to a schlock's a friend she called Bart. Come on, Bart, Jenny yelled. We have a guest we must greet. And off Jenny went so that Elroy she'd meet. It was just a few minutes when Jenny got back to the place she had left with the gifts she had packed. She looked all around, then Elroy she found. He was eating his lunch, lying down on the ground. His head was propped up on a very large board. It was the top of a sign that he had ignored. And this was too bad, for a message was there on the top of that sign, which would have made him aware. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever do you jump. Never, 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 never do you jump on a grump. Elroy looked up, and Jenny he saw. She was standing above him, just staring in awe. Hi, stranger, she said. My friends call me Jen, and the space of the grumps is the town that you're in. Is that so, he replied, as he looked all around. And what kind of town can you tell me I found? Jenny laughed as she said, a town kind and true. And to prove it, I have some gifts here for you. She emptied her cart. There were gifts everywhere. There were flowers and jewelry and an old rocking chair. There were gadgets and clothing and all kinds of things. And Elroy just loved it as he tried on some rings. He loved all the presents. It was really good stuff. And being a child, you couldn't give him enough. He accepted the gifts, 
played with each one by one, then put them right back when he finally was done. They walked into town, Bart pulling the cart, which carried the gifts. Elroy thought he was smart. These hills are forbidden. He didn't know why. He just knew he had presents. As a sign, they walked by. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever do you jump. Never, 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 never do you jump on a grump. There's a playground in town where grumps like to play. So Elroy and Jen went there this fine day. They had a great time playing tag and some chase. They swung on some swings and had them a race. Oh yes, they had fun this fine sunny day. The time went by quickly, just melted away. And as the day ended, many games had been played. Except Elroy's favorite, this game he had saved. Jen, Elroy said, pretty soon I must go. Let's play one last game, a game you should know. We don't need a swing or even a sack. It's a fun little ride, and it's called piggyback. Jenny was shocked and cringed at the thought. Elroy, she gasped. Oh no, we must not. Of rules in our town, we only have one, and it must be obeyed. Jenny started to run. Elroy just smiled like a stubborn old mule as he yelled, So what, Jen? and laughed at the rule. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever do you jump. Never, 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 never do you jump on a grump. Elroy kept laughing as Jenny he chased. He held out his arms for her to embrace, and then it did happen, right next to a tree. The rule had a reason, as Elroy would see. From behind the big tree, Elroy jumped on Jen's back, which made Jenny stumble right into a shack. They fell to the ground as the wind sang a song. It became very quiet, for something was wrong. The ground started to grumble, Jenny started to grow. Her hair grew right down to her feet past her toe. Her face got contorted and her smile disappeared. Her teeth grew all crooked and she really looked weird. But that wasn't all. More trouble did brew. For each grump in the town started looking weird too. The grumps grew real tall, which made the ground quake. It was then Elroy knew he had made a mistake. He clung onto Jenny, who was giant by now, about a hundred feet tall, a very long fall. Jenny then turned from nice into bad and tried knocking him off. It really was sad. Elroy clung on to Jenny as he thought in his head of the warnings and signs that he had all read. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever do you jump. Never, 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 never do you jump on a grump. The huge Jen kept twisting and shaking her gown, so Elroy decided it was time to get down. He looked to the ground at some bushes and dirt and hoped he could fall without getting hurt. He dropped to the ground right off Jenny's back and landed upon a soft gunny sack. And when he jumped off, the grumps all shrunk down to their normal grump size in their normal grump town. But he didn't notice. He just ran really fast, right out of those hills as Auntie Carol he passed. He ran past Auntie Carol without making a sound, and she knew right away something scary he'd found. He ran with such speed, he looked like a jet, passing Mr. Jaloptimus, his face dripping with sweat. Elroy kept running to his home he did go, right into his bedroom where his fright it did show. He was gasping for breath with his tongue hanging out. And while he was sweating, in his mind he did shout, Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever do you jump. Never, 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 never do you jump on a grump. It was quiet in Slouchville the very next day. Some slouches were sleeping while others did play. Every slouch school was open and ready to start. Young slouches were present to learn and get smart. Elroy was smiling and very polite as he sat in his classroom, having changed overnight. He now paid attention to every known rule, the laws of his town, and the code of his school. For rules have a reason, no matter the size, and obeying those rules show people you're wise. But there's one special rule he remembers a lot. It's the rule of the grumps and the surprise that he got. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever do you jump. Never, 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 never will he jump on a grump. The end. Folks, never jump on a grump. There's a rule out there you don't particularly like. There's a reason for it. And all that reading got me a little hungry. So, what are you and I going over to the preparation table where I've prepared something special for you today? Come on. And this is what I've prepared for you today. The ingredients to make a lobster spinach aioli club sandwich. Which brings me to today's word of interest. Prepare. P-R-E-P-A-R-E. -E. Prepare or to make ready. So I made this ready. And uh, here's our sauce, our aioli sauce. It's basically a garlicky uh, mayonnaise. And I've already put that together. And you spread it 
here on the bread. Now one piece of bread you're going to put on both sides. We're going to put on lettuce, and I'm using spinach actually. Bacon, I like bacon. Then we're going to put tomato, and we're going to put our lobster. Perfect. It's easy, it's quick, and it's delicious. So give it a try, and let me know what you think of it the next time I see you on the Children's Corner. Where do you go? Go!